Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. This is section 3.5 dealing with transformations and these are things that we apply to our library functions which we discussed in the previous section. Now the example we're going to use for most of these different transformations is f of x equals x squared. This is our library function that we call the square function or the quadratic function and it's a parabola that looks like this, basically a, a u-shaped uh, shape that we put on our graph with the intercept 0, 0, domain of all real numbers. We should know quite a bit about the quadratic uh, graph. So the first thing we're going to look at is a horizontal shift. When it comes to a horizontal shift, we're just going to let c be some number greater than 0 for our first example. And we're, we're, we're going to replace x with x plus c. So we're evaluating this function. Instead of f of x, we're going to put f of x plus c in here and see how that changes the function. So the first thing we're going to look at is this example. What if c is 2? We're going to evaluate the function for x plus 2 instead of just x. Well, that changes our function. Instead of just being x squared, we have x plus 2 squared. What that does to our function, and one way we can look at it, it says, what would x have to be to get back to our library function? Well, it would have to be a negative 2. Essentially, what we're doing is we're moving or shifting our graph to the left two spots. So instead of having my parabola shape at the origin like it is here, I'm going to shift it over two units and still have the exact same shape. So just using this transformation, I'm able to make a graph of the function and only have to essentially know one reference point because I know what the quadratic function looks like. So this is our transformation, or our shift, to the left. And notice the direction we went is opposite of what I actually see here. x plus 2, well, that shifts the graph minus 2 to the left. What happens if c is less than 0? What if we see a value in here that's less than 0, a negative number? So let's allow c to be negative 3. So I'm going to evaluate the function for f of x minus 3. So if I evaluate my quadratic function for this value, I get x minus 3 quantity squared. Now, what does that do? Well, think of it as what would I have to do to x to get it back to the origin, back to where it was. Well, I'd have to have x be a positive 3. So it essentially shifts the graph to the right three spots. One, two, three, and then it's the same exact shape as our library function. It's just shifted over three. Now, what you'll notice when we talk about horizontal shifts is it's always the opposite of the value you see within the parentheses, in, within the operation of being squared here. So we can see that it shifts it to the right. All right, let's look at the next example. The next thing we're going to look at is compressing or stretching. Uh, and the first thing we're going to look at is relative to the x-axis. Let's uh, replace x with c times x, a constant times the x value. If we look at something where c is greater than 0, we're going to actually do a stretch relative to the x-axis. So if we let c equals 2, I'm going to replace 2 times x into my function of a parabola to get 2x squared. Well, what that does is it says whatever this value of x is, I'm going to multiply it by 2, then square it. So my y value is going to grow by a factor of 2 squared faster. So what does that do? Well, instead of having our library function that's a nice smooth curve coming out to both sides for my parabola, it actually uh, stretches it away from the x-axis. It pulls it away because the y value is growing that much faster. So we call this a stretch relative to the x-axis. So whenever we have a positive value. Now, what happens if we have a value that's between 0 and 1, essentially maybe a fraction or a decimal? Let's allow c to be 1 half. 
So we're going to evaluate our function for 1 half of x. And if I put that in, I get 1 half x quantity squared. Well, what that does is it compresses it towards the x-axis. It gets closer to x, so it's being compressed towards the x-axis. So instead of our library function being nice and smooth, it's slower to grow because the value is 1 half of what it used to be before you squared it. So y is going to grow a little bit slower as x gets larger. Now, in the notes, if you are following along in the notes that go with these lectures, there's another example. But I just want to kind of simplify it and show you that when we deal with horizontal, our x values, if this coefficient is a whole number, it stretches it from x, but at the same time, it compresses it towards y. Let's do a little bit of uh, algebra here. Let's simplify this. 2x squared, well, that gives me the same thing as 4x squared, right? Square 2, square x, which we could say is the same as 4 times f of x. Notice these are the same. This value in here squared is the same as multiplying the function by 4. Well, in a compression, a vertical compression, if c is greater than 0, we're essentially multiplying the function by some value. Well, let c equal 4, and we notice 4 times the function equals 4x squared. Its graph is this graph right here. It's identical. So one thing we can keep in mind if we have to do a compression or a stretch, and we're told relative to the x-axis horizontal or relative to the y-axis vertical, they're actually the same thing. A stretch in the horizontal is a compression in y, because if it's stretching away from x, it means it's getting closer to y. Compressing towards y is a stretch from x. All right, let's look at this example. We already did this one. If we're looking at a stretching relative to being vertical, our y-axis, if 0 is less than c is less than 1, just as we had here, let c equal 1 fourth. Well, we're going to multiply the function by 1 fourth to get this. Well, if I simplify this, a half squared is 1 fourth x squared. So we just do a little simplification. We notice this is actually the same function. So if we multiply by a value less than 1 but greater than 0, we see that we get a stretch in x. It's being stretched, or excuse me, in y. It's being stretched away from y but compressed towards x. So if we can keep that in mind, it's not too complicated to realize that stretching and compressing are the exact same thing. It's just relative to which axis. Are we talking about our horizontal axis or our vertical axis? All right. Next example that we're going to look at of ref uh, translations is a reflection. What happens if we take our parabola and we replace x with a negative x? Now, if you recall, when we talked about uh, looking for symmetry, we're going to see this is exactly what we did to test for symmetry. We replaced x with a negative x. Well, since we're using our quadratic function, if I replace f of negative x and I simplify it, I get the same function I started with. That means it's symmetric with y. And if we go ahead and look at this function, this is our parabola, the f of x equals x squared. What's on this side is a mirror image to what's on this side because of the symmetry in y. So if I replace x with negative x, I'm essentially reflecting across the y-axis. So whenever I put a negative within this squared value, I'm reflecting it across y. Now, that doesn't actually change our library function, does it? Because of its, it's already sym symmetrical. Excuse me. So we can see that if I flip this across the y-axis, I have the same graph I started with. Now, what if we multiply the function by a negative value? Let's say negative 1. This is a reflection through x. This was a reflection through y. But now we're multiplying the whole function by a negative 1. And we're going to reflect it through x. So if I have negative 1 times the function, well, my function is x squared, negative 1 times x squared. So here, what this does, any values that were positive in my library function will now be negative. Negative times 
a positive value will give me a negative. And what that does is it reflects my library function through the x-axis. So you can see I have that here. Well, when I change the sign outside of it, I change the sign of the whole function, the y values. So now the y values become negative. So that's a reflection through x. All right, <clears throat> let's look at the next type of uh, shift we will have, or transformation. It's called the vertical shift. Let's allow c to be a, a number greater than 0, a positive value, and we're going to add c to the whole function. So if, if c is 2, we're going to take the function and add 2, and what we get is the library function of a parabola, that's our example, plus 2 more. Well, what that does is it doesn't change the x values. The x values are whatever I put in. What, it, what it's going to do is add 2 more to the output, the y value. So it's going to take my parabola and shift it vertically, hence the name vertical shift, up 2. So we can see my parabola was just shifted from the origin up 2. Now, what if uh, c is less than 0? What if it's a negative number? Let c equal negative 4 f of x minus 4, our function minus 4, is x squared minus 4. Well, what that does is it shifts the function, x squared, down 4 units. And we still have the shape of a parabola. So let's just review for a moment. We have our horizontal shifts, and that's when they're within the parentheses. It shifts it the opposite direction of what we see, how, uh, how it moves it from 0 either to the left or to the right. When it comes to vertical shifts, it is what you see here, positive or negative. It shifts the whole graph up or down when it's outside of this function. And then we saw reflections. If the reflections deal directly to x, it's a reflection through y. If it changes the sign of the function, it's a reflection through x. All right, so let's see. There is an order of operations that we should apply when dealing with transformations. And the order for transformations is generally do your horizontal shifts first. Then do any stretching or compressing. And like I said, they're essentially the same thing. A stretch in x is a compression in y, and vice versa. Then do any reflections that you see. Where are those negatives within the uh, function? And then do your vertical shifts. This should be done last. You're shifting either up or down. It's vertical. So let's, uh, let's look at an example here. Our example is apply transformations to f of x equals the square root of x. Now we're dealing with a different library function, our square root function, which we should know looks just like this from the origin. It's increasing uh, from 0 to infinity. And we just have that one little piece of the square root function because negative values aren't within its domain. So the first thing we're going to do is shift it to the right 3. So I'm just going to do a little sketch of the graph right here. I'm going to shift it to the right 1, 2, 3. And that makes my graph go that way. So it's the exact same graph. It's just shifted to the right 3. And that's the direction I went. If I seen the function, it would look like that, the opposite, the square root of x plus 3, that shifts it, or excuse me, minus 3. What value would I need for x to get back to 0? It would have to be a positive 3, 3 to the right. Now, we're going to reflect through x. Well, a reflection through x means it changes the sign of the function. That negative is outside of it. So reflecting it through x, my next graph is going to look like that. Just take this function and reflect it through x. So that means that negative's outside of the x. It changes the value of the function, the output. And then our last reflection is shift it down 2. This is our vertical shift, and we're going to move it down 2. So my last graph is going to look 1, 2, just like this one, but shifted down 2. So relatively simple. And you notice when <clears throat> we dealt with linear functions, we always needed two points in order to graph a line. Well, we needed more points for nonlinear equations. But if we understand their library function's behavior, we can use the concept of transformations to be able to understand what the graph's going to look like and have 
the idea of its behavior with only really knowing one point. Maybe it's intercept or it's vertex or something along those lines. All right, let's move on to another example. All right, let's say we're given this function right here, y equals the square root of 1 minus x plus 2. The first thing we want to do is identify what the library function is. And the library function, well, I see a square root with an x under that square root, so I'm going to assume my library function, function is the square root of x. Now, I'm going to graph that because I know the square root of x looks like this. This is its library function. Now I'm going to apply the transformations. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is apply a horizontal shift. Well, what would x have to be to get this back to 0? Well, x would have to be a positive 1. So I'm going 1 to the right. So I'm going to move it 1 to the right. So there we have our graph of the next transformation, our horizontal transformation. Now, I notice there's a negative in front of that x. That affects x directly. It doesn't necessarily change the sign out here. Obviously, we can't change the sign out here because it's a square root. So what we have to do here is realize that this is a reflection through y. So my next graph is going to be a reflection through y. What I see over here is reflected to the other side of y. So instead of being at positive 1, I'm going to reflect to negative 1. And instead of opening to the right, it's going to open to the left, a mirror image through y. Then I have my vertical shift. It says move it up 2. So my last graph of this function right here is going to be shifted up to 1, 2, and then the value goes this way. So I went from this graph to my horizontal shift to my reflection to my final graph with the vertical shift. So this is a sketch of this function right here. And the only point I really had to know was where my reference point is, the origin. I shifted it 1 to the right, kept the same shape. Then I reflected it through y, kept the same shape. And then I shifted it up 2, same shape. Nothing really changed there. So here's your quiz. Now, if we look at this, we notice what kind of transformations we have here. What I expect you to do for this is to graph four graphs. The first one is. What is the library function? Identify the li library function. What are we doing to x? Then the second one is do that horizontal shift. There is a horizontal shift here. How much and in which direction is what you have to denote. The third graph that you should draw is any stretch or compress. Well, I see I'm multiplying by some coefficient, and it's greater than 1. So which way is it going? Is it compressing in y or stretching in y? Is it compressing in x or stretching in x? Well, it depends on how you look at it. Which axis are you going to use as your reference? And then the last graph is your vertical shift. This should be the graph of this equation when you're all done. So I want to see four graphs. And you know, make sure you understand what you're doing in each one. Your library function, be able to identify those. Do your horizontal shifts, any stretches or compressions, any uh, reflections, if there were any. And then finally, your vertical shift to get your final graph. This has been section 3.5 in transformations. Thank you for watching.